Hello guys, it's me again, Mohamed Al Ansari. Today I'm going to talk about chemicals and products that cause tyrosinase inhibition or whitening products. So we use in our daily life many cosmetic products, creams, lotions, or even um, some perfume sometimes uh, that has bleaching compounds that cause whitening for our skin. It will not help us in the condition of vitiligo, treating vitiligo deodorants, etc. You know, some compounds, they cause whitening of the skin and they're widely distributed in today's manufacturing companies. Uh, first, I would like to accredit these guys for their great research and review and the paper entitled Skin Whitening Agent Medical Chemistry Perspective of Tyrosinase Inhibitors. So it's a, a kind of review and I'm doing a summary of their review with other also, um, journals, publications, uh, readings that I can summarize this topic. So first, I would like to go with family classification of whitening compounds so we can avoid them. So mainly, um, they use uh, either human, uh, they have evidences of human ty tyrosinase, inhibition or they use models for research like mushroom tyrosinase so in the lab when we are doing experiments we use mushroom tyrosinase or other bacterial uh, tyrosinase and or other uh, species tyrosinase and these family are classified on these different names so mind my uh, english it's not my first language and i might have an accent pronouncing these names calcones and flavonones is one of the family and there is an analogues of resveratrol cumarins derivatives beta phenyl alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls thiourease thiosemicarmobenzins and peptides so I will go for each and every types of them and show examples. Now, generally, I would like to head up these main components or main ingredients because they are widely distributed among different products that cause skin whitening. Hydroquinones, sometimes are referred as HQ, arbutin, kojic acid. Azelaic acid, ascorbic acid, elagic acid, tranexamic acid, HQMME, folium, and any folium, regardless what name comes after it, if you see, if you read folium in the ingredients, don't use it as a vitiligo patient. Cortex castania, it's a type of um, species that they use extracts from dimethyl sulfoxide glycolic acid lactic acid which also are found in dairy products and a chemical uh, that has the number 119 so these are the structures and i'm showing you the structures because this topic is kind of difficult topic to explain because what they are doing in manufacturing, sometimes if one of these components uh, is changed in the main structure, so the main structure is there, but they add some chemicals here and there and they patent it and they brand name it, they can change the name, but the chemical is the same. And I will go through this um, in today's review. So first let's talk about this family of whitening compounds called calconins. Sometimes you would see a full long name. You would just search for the main component. And this is um, a basic rule that we are going to follow. And sometimes they come with different names. Just search for calcons or 
sometimes they come in different names as we see here congeners pyridyl as a cal cons so what they do sometimes they just change the structures to a different structure and they have their analogs so mainly they cause the same effect but the name could change so the presence of this now in chemistry is just a position ortho methoxy it has a methane and an oxy group a para position so you don't need to know the details of this just look for the names i'm just showing you this so you can understand why they came in different names sometimes they're showing the different derivatives now we'll go to comarins they are a very potent components against tyrosinase activity. And names like neuroflavin, if you see the um, IC50, then this is the family of the compounds that cause whitening. So sometimes it's just IC50, and sometimes they write names. And I'm writing here in red, because uh, sometimes it change, it just change the uh, names, but it contain with the abbreviation the main name. So mainly, how they do the sometimes they design the drug that cause whitening. The main enzyme is tyrosinase, and it uses tyrosine as a substrate. So what they do, they change either the pocket and the phenol group here or they change the structure on the right side on the right hand side here the amino and the carboxylic acid so they would make it to be an agonist or an antagonist or cause um, inhibition some sort of inhibition to the enzyme so that's how different components are created so the phenol group here when they change it in a way that interacts with the hydrophobic protein pocket of tyrosinase. So tyrosinase is the enzyme that causes your pigment. So if it blocks it, it will not cause it to be active. And the hydrophobic pocket is important for the enzyme activity. That's why we also, in our VT treatment medicine, we have antilipidemic compounds to prevent any interaction in case if there is a tyrosinase polymorphism. The other part here, they can change it also to complex with copper because copper is a cofactor for tyrosine. So that's how they design these components and drugs. So I'm just here um, placing the title of this figure, tyrosine modification cofactor deactivation. Now, let's talk about this compounds here. Trolls. So they came with different names. It's really difficult for me to pronounce it. And there is a low concentration in grape. So the way we also look for these compounds and other derivatives, they sometimes don't name it as such they would name the whole compound so you look for um, benzene methyl benzene and phenyl methyl benzene sulfonate i know that there are some chemicals that could not do any whitening and they have some of these abbreviation but it's really difficult to trace all of them so i would just use natural product these are different names as well, as you can see here. So you can pause this video, write down the names, or just basically use natural compounds. And be careful if you're not using natural compounds, you have to search for some of these names.
Cumarins are also a family of benzopyrone compounds. It's either available from natural or synthetic origin. And you can have it sometimes in cumarins um, hybrid compounds, 3-phenyl cumarins. They change sometimes with, uh, with hydroxy or alkaloxy and bromo substituents. Substituents with um, different structures can also change the activity. Sometimes it becomes more um, stronger. So this is examples here we have. Now, thiophosphonic acid is also one of the whitening compounds, and sometimes it comes with uh, derivatives of chlorophenyl or methylphenyl. Beta-phenyl, unsaturated carbonyls are other groups, and the way you can find the names is benzyl dean hydane tion it's difficult to pronounce it so if you have these compounds and some of them they mimic the chemical structure of tyrosine or dopa which blocks the enzyme or reversibly inhibit the enzyme Benzoyl, if you have three uh, substituent phenyl here, with these analogs also, they are, they will cause um, whitening, skin whitening compounds. So these are some names and variants. So another family is cinnamaldehyde. cinnamaldehyde. And these are different uh, names and components of the same mother compounds. Theurea derivatives is also one of the components that we should check before using the products. Sometimes it can be just abbreviated as PTU. So most of these, they just bind to copper at the active site of the tyrosinase and block the enzyme activity. So copper is very important for the tyrosinase action. Different names, abbreviations. So here is the PTU and its derivatives and other compounds with other structures. So these are the names that you will also write down and the list of the paper you're now writing the names. So, this is another phenylurea structures. Sometimes, this is an example of two compounds. They do have phenylurea, but when one of them has phenyl thiourea and it's safe so i brought this example just to show you that even if you check the abbreviation the names and they contain the name of which is you suspect or might cause whitening or blockage of tyrosine action tyrosinase action like sometimes it does not it is safe but it is better to be sure then sorry so i would exclude anything that has similar names even if it's safe because it might not so we have the ethanomide and its analogs so thiomide is one of the names that we should also be careful of, of using and sometimes they just they do not just block tyrosinase action they actually prevent uh, or cytotoxic to melanocytes so they destroy the melanocytes 
And these are different names and substitute. Saccharine is also um, one of the compounds. You might not find it in topical things. It's just uh, a sweetener. And this is the name, the chemical name. Now we come to the group that's called thiosemicarbosones. It's the major class of tyrosinase inhibitor. And it mainly chelates copper ions. That's why we, we have a high copper concentration in our VT treatment too. Because there are many things, whether it's systemic or topical, that can, you know, just chelate the copper and prevent it from working. The, uh, these are derivatives of amino acetophenones. And the thiosemicarbonosomes under the, the, the this group or family group. So if you read like thiosemicarbizides or thiosemicarbizones, then you should avoid these products. Sometimes it comes just before the name for aloxy, alkoxy, or for Aciloxy, then it comes the name semi semi carbazone peptides. So the previous uh, compounds are mainly chemicals or organic or inorganic compounds, but there is also tyrosinase inhibitors that comes as a, a series of amino acid that has similar structure to the uh, to the action or cause uh, com competitive inhibition. Some of them, they come in the name as dipeptide, cyclic peptide, short sequence uh, oligopeptides, uh, ol kojic acid tripeptide. So these names sometimes comes instead of um, clarifying, you know, what is the use of it. So we, sh we should avoid them. So sometimes it comes like oligopeptides or octapeptides. And these are the names of the amino acid, arginine, alanine, aspartic acid, serine, arginine, alanine, etc. Decapeptide, you know, sometimes it's just more numbers of the amino acid. They, usually they, they wouldn't write these um, series of amino acid um behind the product you're using but they would just write oligopeptides or octapeptides or tripeptide etc so sometimes they would read like de decapeptide p4 or decapeptide 12 So tripeptide RCY or and or R uh, CRY. So you can see that it has amino acids. And I want to note something, you know, just for the future. These names like RCY, CRY, you it might not be this this name that you're seeking because in the future, CRY can mean you know, these abbreviation can mean many things. So in the future, if they use, for example, alpha B crystalline, it's also uh, abbreviated as CRY, and it's a it's a chaperone protein that might have therapeutic uh, effect in, in medicine in the future uh, to use as a drug. So in the future, this names may might change, might mean something else. It's just to clarify that in chemistry, if you read a name or a short abbreviation, it can mean many things and not in particular what we are talking about. So we have here an example of hydroxy 
pyridinon l phenyl alanine conjugates so if you read these conjugates they are also whitening compounds and we have different structure as we can see here and different analogs they place different um, ethoxy or butyl or chloro or chlorobenzene etc now um, we will talk about other compounds rhizome of gastroida this sometimes they just give uh, the name of the extract of the species that they are working on or they have the extract from or they patented their product from and these guys are showing that this particular natural extract it can be you know the the uh, amino acid uh, peptide can be modified in different ways and all cause whitening compound and sometimes the, you should seek the organum vulgari it's a species if they say anything related to that species it has an extract uh, or the sometimes they would just say vanillin or vanillic acid it it is a whitening compound and use, usually using with benzoic acid and cinamic acid cinamic acid is also one of the um, very um, potent whitening compound piperazine also so the two hydroxy tyrosol sometimes it is abbreviated as 2 dash ht methamazole and this is the long name derivatives of it we should be careful and this is other names I found also in literature. Picronoside, or sometimes between brackets, P ginseng. Does is that familiar name to you? Yes, it's a ginseng uh, herb. It it contains a compound that is also a whitening compound. Sometimes they would also say Korean ginseng. So just heads up. So this compound here is the one of the components of the ginseng that cause whitening. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh this natural extracted uh, compounds whether it comes in its long name ester or dhfame this is another name of it. Or sometimes they would just say juvenile hormone. It's an expensive compound, but you sometimes find it an expensive product. Sometimes they would say CS1029 extract. It comes from a bacteria or a species that they use their bacteria genetic engineering to express and purify this um, Juvenile hormone, it causes whitening. Other compounds that we should be also aware of under this uh, category comes in different names as I'm showing you here. This is also a table that shows you that there are different compounds under this category that we should be also aware of comes in different forms beta gamma or alpha and it shows the tyrosine inhibition in human and in mushroom tyrosinase other also compounds that we should be aware of i would like you just to note down the names if you are seeking to check every beauty uh, product that you are using I would like just to say a general thing. Um, generally, just avoid, use just natural product, avoid anything that's, you know, used for beauty or cosmetic that cause whitening. So, 
Another group is the cinnamomium. The cinnamon uh, has also other uh, derivatives, as you can see here. This is just a commercial name, and this is the chemicals. So this is just an answer of what we should avoid in terms of chemicals that are found in our cosmetic products. Again, general answer, just use natural products. It's really difficult to trace these guys. It's a big business. It's a big uh, manufacturing. They have just changed the structure, give new names, and they patent each chemicals alone after changing and modifying the structures. And they're all aiming to use whitening product that it is could be safe to use, meaning that not cytotoxic, not destroying the melanocyte. Sometimes it just, you know, blocks the enzyme action. Most of the market whitening compounds, they are huge business, big money. And whether it's in Asia, in Africa, in Middle East, rest of the world, they're bringing a lot of uh, income to these companies and they are having a huge competition just to try different families of whitening compounds and they keep changing the names, the abbreviations, but the chemical structures are the same. They just modify it. So I try to summarize and bring down all the components or the, at least the major components that are used in these pharmaceuticals or non-pharmaceuticals as just cosmetics, general whitening products or compounds. Hope you find this helpful. It took some efforts to do it and wish you all the best treatment and results. Thank you all for watching.